Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. And welcome back everybody to a bit more of our solo character challenge run with the Bard. It has been like two months since I last played this. So if there's something I said last time and I don't remember about it anymore, that is pretty much why. I think last time I decided that it's better for me to go outside and just grind since I will have to grind anyways. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Also, um, I basically haven't felt like playing this in, well, two months really. Needed a bit of a break from the game. But recently I started theory crafting and thinking about strategies on how to approach things again. So that's kind of a sign for me that, hey, I would like to play this again. And so here we are. And thank you for the good luck, I can absolutely use that. And by the way, Takase, thank you. I almost missed that. Thank you so much, Takase, for 16 rumps of support. Welcome back. Well, I'm glad you enjoy your stay. Thank you. By the way, everybody, did you know that Takase is pretty awesome? Make sure to follow him on Twitch. Timer! Well, I guess that's not exactly new. <laughs> I tend to forget that. Thank you, Bloodlight. And thank you, dude, dude, dude. Door face. Yes, those doors look like penguin faces to me. They're kinda cute. Oh yeah. Although they do look a little bit unhappy. I guess you could see them as penguin faces, or alternatively, you could also see them as like little knobs here for teeth. And that's the nose instead of the mouth. Oh. By the way, um, I'm gonna get into writing. So, two things. One, I will need more experience in order to be able to take down Biblos as well as Ifrit reliably. And both of these bosses are... Well, my best grinding spots are effectively out in the plains here anyway, so I might as well do the grinding right now. So this next boss here immediately is just going to be a bit easier as well. The reason why I need more levels is Biblos is a monstrosity by itself, but at least we can run him out of magic rather easily, and the other one is Ifrit is quite a monster too, and if I can avoid having to run him out of magic that would be better. Oh yeah, I remember now the other reason as to why I wanted to complete that section first so I would get the mangoes so I would be able to one-shot these guys. Ah, that's right. But the other part is, I also need money. I will need to buy a flame ring as well as an angel ring. That's a hundred thousand gold, so that will just take a while. <laughs> Your face. Wow. I'm the door face. I'm not sure that's a good idea for us. So either way, um, one thing I was particularly thinking of is I should be able to use the fact that we can hide, unhide, attack and then hide again under certain circumstances where it might be beneficial. So one of the tricky things that I've been thinking of is how will we defeat Xtef at the end of World 2? And honestly, I actually have a pretty solid strategy for that one now. And it will it does not even involve running him out of magic. Which is the crazy thing about it. Either way, right, let's look at our stats. Our agility is kind of decent. 36 is pretty good. There's going to be certain weapons. And actually I'm not sure whether there's anything else. Either way, mostly weapons that allow us to increase that further. Right now we do have the elf cape, which is plus one agility. Uh, we will get a dancing dagger eventually, which is plus one as well. So we have 37 speed. Total. Now, let me actually switch over to the other view real quick. I haven't done that in a while. Where is it? There it is. So, our upcoming challenges are going to be trying to take care of Liquid Flame right now. So, however, Liquid Flame is quite straightforward. There's not really a whole lot I can do about that aside from just standard strategy. So that's not the concern. 
the concern is something like Ifrit. And for Ifrit, I will actually want to briefly go ahead and look up the uh, algorithms guide, as in its AI script, in order to see what turns it does when and how fast Ifrit is in particular. That's gonna check Ifrit real quick. Not the metamorpha Ifrit, just straight up Ifrit. Alrighty. So Ifrit here, he has a total of... Hello? Oh, I'm not signed in. Hang on. That's why I can't change things. Enter your password. Well, if only I remember that one. I don't usually have to type it in anymore. That's mildly awkward. I didn't think of this one. This one, maybe? Okay, that one worked. Now it just needs to load now. Okay, now I can change things. So, for Ifrit... What I want to note is he has a total speed of 40. So this is actually mildly unfortunate, because let me real quick explain what I wanted to do with the speed. Also, might as well continue hitting wolves in the meantime while I'm doing this. So the idea of using a certain amount of speed is quite simple. We have 36 speed, and if we are faster than the enemy, what we could do in theory is we could use one turn to hide and then the enemy does a thing, then we unhide on the next turn, hit it, and then hide again. So if we are faster than the enemy, we can specifically get hit by one ability and nothing else, or one attack round of the enemy and nothing else. However, if we are slower than the enemy, we will always get hit by two attack rounds in between hiding. So that strategy I am outlining really only works if we are faster than the enemy. So unfortunately this is not going to work for Ifrit. And that's kind of my entire strategy going to be for Xdev actually. So by the time we get to Xdev we do have a song to increase our speed. It will be a little bit tricky and dicey to increase our speed to the levels that I need it to be. But for the most part this should be rather fine. So, let's see. The game might be just a little loud. Thank you for the heads up. I toned it down probably a bit too much now. Alrighty. It's probably also because I'm actually turning my head in order to look over at the spreadsheet. So that does not help. Thank you, Quadlight. Alrighty. So, unfortunately we don't really have a way to... Well... Battle Ifrit properly, let's put it this way. But what about Biblos? Biblos might actually work. So, Biblos is the next boss. Unfortunately, Biblos also has 40 speed. So, I cannot really use that strategy for Biblos either. Um, That's really unfortunate. I can't really use the strategy for free Biblos either. What else? Also, Biblos has Threat, Hammer Fight. On the first turn, Fight, Charm, Wind Slash. On the second turn, Hammer Fight, Threat. On the third turn... Let me actually just copy the AI script over real quick. So, in Final Fantasy V, Enemies can... Why does this do this? Alright, I need to copy this over bit by bit. Give me a second. Also, by the way, on the right side I'm just healing and then holding down the A button while doing other stuff. By the way, if you'd like to uh, take a look at this document, or even use it for yourself for whatever reason, uh, the link is in the SSCC uh, 
amount if you'd like to go for that. Alright, just gonna copy it line by line because otherwise it doesn't really work properly, it looks like. This should work fine. Alrighty, so. Pivlos AI script is as follows. What? What's happening? Am I pressing multiple buttons at the same time? I might be, I guess. So that's the first line. You can't see it properly yet, I know. I try to rearrange stuff because I'm kind of in an awkward situation here. Yes, always share resources, because some people might be interested in just kind of taking a peek at it, even if they are not interested in just, well, doing the stuff for themselves, and that's okay. That's often the thing for me. I look at notes for, like, Pokemon games or stuff like that, even though, uh, well, I don't really run them. So, eh, one more. Wait, this is supposed to be here. And we need to do this in the proper color. Alrighty, so, in Final Fantasy V, how enemies work is that they always choose between one or three possible options or attacks that they can use. And in the case of Biblos, he has Threat, Hammer and Fight in the first turn, then he has a 1 in 3 chance for each Fight, Charm and Wind Slash in the second turn, then third turn is Hammer, Fight and Threat in the third turn, and Sonic Wave, Wind Slash and Fight in the fourth turn. Now the thing is, Threat uh, puts your, uh, makes your cactus slow, and that is actually kind of a big deal because you can no longer act nearly as fast as you could normally. And similarly uh, difficult it is to handle with uh, Sonic Wave, which halves your level, which means you deal significantly less damage than you would otherwise do normally. So this is actually a major problem because we can hide in boss battles in order to run the uh, bosses out of MP. So they cannot do certain things. So specifically, Hammer costs MP, Charm costs MP, and unfortunately none of the other abilities from Biblos cost MP aside from the counterattacks. So we will still have to deal with most of his AI script, except for the drain and the armor, I guess. Looks like your speed is good, as good as it gets until World 3. Yeah, but I think we get the speed song after Biblos. Actually, when do you get the speed song? But yes, Biblos unfortunately is going to be a major problem. And specifically for Biblos, I will have to level up Mainly in order to get more maximum HP and grind out like 40 elixirs. Speed song is World 2 surrogate. Okay, at least it's before X Def, so my plans still will work there. But that's good to know. Thank you for that heads up too. You were only thinking about equipment, that's fair. Yeah, actually, as I said, the Dancing Dagger will give plus one agility. And I think that's it, aside from the uh, Elven Mantle, which also gives plus one. So there's, those are the only two things. So we will have 38 agility. But 40 is just a little bit too much. Hmm. So we... As I said, I will pretty much have to deal with a full power Biblos, minus armor, so we deal about, in a sense, double the damage, as well as... We will still be slowed. I guess not rain attacks. 
but this will still be really slow. But for that I will need a ton of elixirs. There's actually not really much of a way around it, I don't think. Which means my best option of getting elixirs right now is going back to the ship graveyard. So realistically, I should do this right now, while I don't have a good weapon to take out or just straight up level level. So... Yeah. But, let's put it this way. Let's assume I will be able to... get to x -def here. And let me actually expand this real quick. It'll take me a few times. Let's assume I get to x -def in x -def's castle. And... The strategy that originally just kind of is quote-unquote obvious is to simply go ahead and run x -def out of magic because some of mo his most powerful spells are magic. But this actually has a certain problem in his second phase of his AI script. Let me actually grab the AI script real quick before I do anything else. But this is... Uh, x -def is kind of the reason why... Or more specifically, it's why I kind of was thinking of coming back to this game. Wait, that's the wrong thing. Because I was just really intrigued... ...to try and figure out my way around x -Def as a boss. So... ...need to just copy up over and then also have you see everything. In theory, I should probably... Oh, no. Wait. This is wrong. This should be here. This should be here. In theory, what I should also do is I should do this and put this into my base template so I have his AI script in the first place. That way it's easier to check stuff. Either way... I'm only copying the relevant things. Also, I still need more turns. Uh, one above, that is four. I need five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just actually do this. There's no reason not to just do this. Well, there is. Kind of difficult to see. But I can just do that instead. So, once again, all of these are always a 1 in 3 decision on what x -Def is going to do during his move. So, the reason why we are looking that far ahead in the game is because x -Def is always one of the biggest difficulties in facing him. But surprisingly, I think actually the Bard is going to be one of the characters that will have it a bit easier than most other characters. Hey PJ! Welcome, and thank you for the good luck. I will definitely need that. I just realized that this is going to be a pretty lengthy grind until we are past Biblos, but... The interesting thing is, I think, once we are past Biblos, it will be fine, for the most part. Either way, so this is x AI script 1. So basically this kind of indicates that once he is below 16,000 HP, he enters his second phase. And this is exactly the reason why I do not want to run him out of magic. Let me explain. Uh, he has 32,000 and some change HP, which means that... Uh, he... We need to deal a bit more than 16,000 damage in order to push him into this, his second AI phase. And for many solo cactus, that is a huge problem, because his first phase has a move that 2 and 3, or a turn that 2 and 3 times just instantly kills you. And that turn is Condemn. Condemn on the x -Def fight never misses. And Condemn is effectively, you're dead. 
it puts a timer above your head and you die after a short while. And there's not really anything you can do about this in this game here. Final Fantasy VI, at least you can equip an armor for an accessory that makes you undead. But this is, does not exist in Final Fantasy V, at least not to the extent which would prevent the death. There is the bone armor, but it does not prevent Condemn from actually killing you. Plus, the bard cannot even equip that without the matter. Either way, the goal is usually to push him under 16,000 HP as quick as possible while having a reflect ring equipped, which will reflect all of his spells back to himself. And that's uh, mainly the idea for most characters. And this is going to be similar for a bard as well, except that the bard will have a slightly better option for this. Now, to give you a brief idea, Xtef himself has 50 speed. So that means we will need to use the speed song in order to get at least 51 speed in order for my strategy to work. So, what is my strategy? First of all, when we hide, we will completely avoid anything he does on any given turn. So we can effectively pick on which turn we want to get in. And if we are faster than him, thanks to having well enough speed, we can specifically go in as an unhide on one turn, just after he uses like his ability, then do an attack or whatever we want to do, and then immediately hide again after our turn. Actually, that's not true. We don't even need to be faster than him for this in particular. But if I'm faster than him, I can't take an action in between. Otherwise I can only just unhide again. Or hide again. So, either way, what is my plan? My plan is to reflect level 3 flare, specifically on his very last turn in phase 1, just before he goes to condemn. He has a 2 in 3 chance to use level 3 flare, or a vacuum wave. Vacuum wave is a pretty heavy physical attack that will deal like... Actually I have no idea how much it deals anymore. I would guess like a thousand damage in one swing. It's physical, so we will sit in the back row. More like 800, I guess, if we are in the back row. Either way, the idea is to reflect level 3 flare and then just hide from the rest of his AI script and then just unhide again. This will deal about 800 damage to him whenever he uses level 3 flare. The reason why we want to be faster than XDEF for this is because we kind of need to heal in between once in a while with high potions or elixirs. So that's the entire idea. I basically hide the entire script until we get to level 3 flare. Go in because we have the reflect ring for phase 2 anyways. We reflect it and then we just hide again. And he can never hit us anymore except for when we need to speed up. Uh, alternatively what I could try is I could try to just, well, not do the speed up and just unhide before level 3 flare turn, right after his fight fight bio. And then I will get to hide again, right after his flare turn. Oh yeah, hide will absolutely be the best ability. Yeah. From... The other thing that I've read, where somebody already completed the Bard solo challenge, they used, uh, they actually ran XDEF out of MP, which takes a long time, considering how much MP he has. You can reduce that to 10,000 by giving him an ether, but still, that takes like an hour or so. Or more, even. Which is why I think just using Flare turn specifically to reflect is going to be our best shot. Which also means in... Uh, contrast is that specifically I want to sing during those two turns in order to speed up. Like after his turn where he fight condemn condemns, I want to unhide, start singing, and then he will give me a bit of time until I can re-reach this turn here specifically. This turn here is where he always will hit us physically. So. For anybody who does not know, when your bard starts singing, he will just gradually increase the stats of party members depending on which song it is, it will be different stats. For the speed song, it will increase the speed. And that is the song that we have during this time. 
And the faster the bard is, the faster the speed stat will increase, which is a plus. So it will just kind of multiply in a sense. But we cannot manually stop singing, which is the big problem. We need to get hit by him physically in order to stop singing. So if he were to use Earthshaker, Flame, Hurricane, Zombie Breath, Bio, level 3 Flare, I would never get out of the singing because he doesn't actually use a physical attack to knock us, us out of the singing. And that's exactly the reason why this turn here is so convenient. It will always be either a physical attack or a special physical attack. They hit like a truck, but well, we will no longer be singing so we can hide right after. Worth noting is that we will actually take the Earthshaker attack right after, probably. Which means we want to go into this fight with Float Active. Because here is where we will be still... Here is where he knocks us out of the singing, but as long as he is faster than us, he will get the next turn before we get to do anything. So I need to have enough HP to survive a Vacuum Wave plus another attack. Which shouldn't be a problem because that's kind of how much we need anyways to defeat Biblos. Hey Life Tactics, welcome, how are you doing? No need for singing at all. Maybe. We could potent uh, conceivably do it, but if he ever uses Vacuum Wave... ...and I don't get to heal up in between the level 3 flares... ...we would be in trouble. Like, I can... ...not reliably unhide in any during any turn at all. So I do think that using Speed Song in order to speed up above speed 50 is going to be the way to go. You missed this? I see. Yeah, I just did not feel motivated at all to play this until, well, just recently. Alrighty. But we are still here. This is going to take a long while until we finally get up to x -Def. We will need to get by Billos, and... Well... I don't think there's much of a way around... Grinding out Elixirs. Because even if we run him out of MP, Biblos that is... We will still have to plink away at least 3600 HP with like 200 damage attacks. 250 if we're lucky. And the better we are, or the luckier we are, the more attacks we get in before he uses Sonic Wave to cut down our damage, or threats to cut down our speed. So yeah, that is the current plan. The... So, grinding out tons of elixirs. And we have a plan for... Hexdev. So that's good. He would not be motivated for this grind either. It's actually very relaxing if you're in the mindset for it. But I just wanted to do something else sometime. Either way, we could actually just kind of scout out other enemies for how much speed they have. In fact, maybe I should upgrade or update my spreadsheet to not just include magic evasion, but also include speed. Like, I technically have one more sp space to put the speed in for each boss, and speed is actually more and more relevant. Mainly because I start realizing how I can play around and use speed to my advantage, if we are faster anyways. And hey, Zuka Blue, welcome, how are you doing? Well, let's see, what are other bosses coming up? Sandworm, there's not really anything else we can, or interesting we can do with Sandworm, I don't think. Um, Crayclaw. Let's see. There's the Abductor, there's the Gilgamesh from the bridge, there's Fishman. More Abductors, Puroboros, Titan, Chimera Brain, Arca Avis. I think I just leveled up. Yeah, we just leveled up to 23 while talking and figuring out stuff, so that's good. You're doing good? That's nice. What else? Flame Gun, Adam and Timmy. Hmm. 
All right, let's actually take a look at this guy here real quick. So, we have Adam and Timmy comes up a bit later. Adam and Timmy has a speed of 30. And his AI script is as simple as it gets. It is either fight or fight plus fight. Actually, it's the other way around. He always uses fight plus fight first, then he uses fight. And that's all his AI script is. Like, he literally attacks twice, then he attacks once. He attacks twice, then he attacks once. So what we can do against Adam and Timmy, because we are faster than him, we can hide during fight fight. And right after he fight fights, we unhide. Just basically in between here, we unhide. We attack just before he gets his regular attack in, and then we hide again while he is going to fight fight. So this is going to be way simpler overall. Timmy! Yes. So what about Crayclaw? Let's see. The tricky thing about Crayclaw is I don't think there's a good place to actually get into the thing. Let's see. Tails Crow Claw's AI script is as follows. Tail screw, tail screw, fight. Tail screw, tail screw, fight. Tail screw, mucus, and fight. Mucus is a problem because I think it inflicts HP leak status. And Crayclaw also has a speed of 40. Oh, we can't even do that. So, Crayclaw, we will just have to hope and pray in order to defeat him. Because that's just too much speed. We can't really do anything useful with that. Oh well. That's alright. Okay, back to the grind, I guess. And as mentioned before, since I think I will need a ton of elixirs, I will just go back and grind them out. That's pretty much my best option. The only thing that I could do, right now anyways, is technically I could go ahead, defeat Liquid Flame, uh, do the Karnak escape sequence, and get the Magos out of this, or the Guardian Dagger I guess. Which gives me a 1 in 4 chance more to deflect attacks. But then again, it's not gonna be that big of a deal to deflect a few more attacks in a lower level area. What is the level goal here? Actually, I haven't figured it out yet. That's a good question. I'm gonna... I'm going to go uh, and figure out the level goal, actually. Once I'm in position to just run back and forth for elixirs. That way, I have more time to speculate. But yeah, what is going to be our level goal? I will probably plug in... I should have just defeated those on the way. Too late. I'm so... It's such a habit to just run away if I want to go somewhere. <laughs> Calculator, there it is. I'm going to switch over to the calculator for you guys as well. And I need to put in the numbers here. I think weapon attack 36. What is the Guardian Tiger weapon? Attack damage. There, 36 is actually the uh, attack.
attack damage of the Guardian Dagger, so that's fine. How much strength do we have? I'm just gonna double check all the values. I assume this is still for the Bard, because I haven't really used it for anything else, but it's been so long. Okay, we have 19 strength, 36 agility. It's going to be accurate, spell power is whatever. Because we only really care about these. Okay. Putting in Biblos stats real quick while I have a little bit of time. So Biblos has speed 40. And 3600 HP. He is level 24, which doesn't really matter. Uh, defense is going to be important. 10 defense. Ooh. Magic evade is 20. Magic defense is 30. Have that backwards. Okay, so that's gonna be Biblo stats and my stats. How much vit did I put the vitality in properly? Vitality is 27. Ah, now we have 17 vitality. That's a different number. Okay, that's gonna be interesting. We're going to run back real quick first. We are currently level 23, I think. And what did I say with elixirs? How many I want? We have currently 23 elixirs, which actually is a lot more than I thought we had. That's good. I'm probably shooting for 40 elixirs, maybe 50, depending on how fast this is going to be. I mean, in the end, it's not going to be fast at all. Just how it is. Let's see, 23. At level 27, we will have another agility and attack multiplier. That's a good place to aim for. Alternatively, level 34 is another set where we will have more attack damage overall to work with. So, for anybody who's wondering, what am I doing? I'm just backtracking to a previous place, specifically here, where this is the ghost ship. Ghost ship is effectively the second area you ever visit in a playthrough, and the reason for this is because I will need elixirs. The only healing items you have access to are potions, which only heal 50, like 5-0. That's how much they heal, that's basically nothing. And that's kind of a problem. And the other thing that you get are high potions, however, they are in very short supply. You get them you get like two or three total at this point in the game, and you cannot buy them until a fair bit later. So we have like a high potion, which is 500 healing, which is pretty decent, but still not necessarily enough, since we already have over 500 HP. And elixirs are literally the only other healing item that we could get reliably. So. My goal is going to be getting like 40, maybe 50 of them, in order to work my way through that Biblos boss. And I genuinely think that is how many I need. Whether it's true or not, we'll see. Either way, the reason why we go back here is specifically these guys here have a 1 in 16 chance to drop me elixirs. And getting this formation, where we have two under the rusks at the same time, is pretty much the best thing we can have happen. Unfortunately, I actually don't deal quite enough damage. It will be level 25 until I deal a little bit more damage, so... That's gonna be a thing too. These car cursor enemies also would ha uh, have a 1 in 16 chance to give us an elixir, but... I don't think the encounter is necessarily worth it. Maybe it is. At least we can one-shot them, I guess. Tongue is the most damaging move that can happen to us. It inflicts HP leak status, which means we will lose continuously throughout the turn about 100 HP total. And if I sit in the menu for a while longer, it actually is even more HP lost. Hey, nice, an elixir. So... oh well. Let's see. 
and welcome to you, Duckfist. How is this Boonie challenge treating me? Uh, I've only just restarted like 40 minutes ago, after taking a fair bit of a break, and well, the prospect doesn't look too terribly great since Biblos will be a major pain. But on the bright side, I have a pretty solid strategy for x at the end of World 2 now, so that's not gonna be that big of an issue in comparison. But for now, here we are. We currently have like level 23? I should pay more attention, I need to kill those tongue guys first. So 27 is where we get an additional attack multiplier, through both the uh, agility as well as other stuff. I think we are 23 right now. Let me double check. Yeah, 23 it is. Sing for 50 turns hiding to dodge lethal attacks. Uh, yeah, the thing is the singing is not going to be a thing yet, but that's pretty much what it is going to be for x -Def. No, we do not have songs yet. The, song, the first song we get is right after Biblos, and that one song would actually be incredibly useful for Biblos. Well, I would be a nice support. Incredibly useful is a, probably a bit exaggerated. So the strategy for Biblos will be running him out of MP first, and then we go ahead and hope that we defeat him. But that's gonna be a bit of a problem. Either way, for anybody who does not know how this works, this is the modifier column. This one here, and that is going to be the most important one. Because of how dagger and agility and attack power works, we basically need to reach a full number here that is higher. But sometimes they also go down because daggers are weird. So our next best level for dealing decent damage is going to be level 27. At level 27 we will have 673 HP. Which is actually not going to be enough for Biblos, I don't think. I think we need to have more for Biblos. To defeat him more or less reliably. So... I will want to probably go to level 34 just for Biblos. It's gonna be a kind of a lengthy grind, but I guess that's gonna be the goal for now. We'll see where we are in terms of levels after we get a, these 40 elixirs or so. Okay, that's all there is for planning. Now we're just going to be running back and forth. Probably want to hear once in a while. <laughs> these uh, car uh, these under the rusk enemies are probably the biggest reason why I want to go and get the guardian dagger sooner rather than later, so I can one shot them as well. Since this is the best formation to get elixirs from, if I can one shot them. So I guess there is a pretty decent reason to stick with the wolves until a little bit later. I will probably go and grab the da Guardian Dagger at level 27. Okay, 27 is going to be the goal for now. Which will still take a while.
Yeah, I think I'm gonna go back to the wolves. Maybe 50 is overkill with elixirs. Well, I guess it strongly depends on how lucky I get. This bar trick. Hey, Pucaroni. Pucaroni? Pucaroni. Pucaroni? Feel free to correct me on how to pronounce your name. But thank you. I definitely will need some luck. You don't even have access to Hearts by Biblos. Yes, that's actually kind of the worst thing about it. The one time Bart's uh, harps would actually be really useful is Biblos. And you don't even get them yet. The C is soft like the S in soft. Uh, so Pusar Puseroni. Puseroni. Something like that, hopefully. Thank you for the pronunciation guide, even if I still butcher it. That works. <laughs> okay, I guess that's not quite accurate then. Or Pussyroni? I guess the E could also be, well, E rather than A. Post Karnak, so you'd have the mangoes at least. Yeah. So the thing is, the damage calculation I did is with the mangoes. At level 35, for I will have 949 HP, which hopefully should be enough. It's a good knife, but still, only a knife. Yeah. Interesting enough, knives are one of the best weapon classes in Final Fantasy V. They have a lot of really good weapons. So if you play a character that cannot actually use knives, you're immediately in a huge disadvantage. To be fair, there's only like two. So it doesn't happen all that often. So, we go back to wolves, they give more experience, and we need the money anyways. We need to get an angel ring as well as a fire ring later on. Because I haven't really figured out how to take on certain bosses without them. So, angel ring specifically for soul cannon, but also it will be potentially useful against... Uh... The Hero Plant. But the Hero Plant should actually be not that big of an issue, interestingly enough. No, stop this with the back attacks, please. I'm pretty sure this is more than 1 in 16 so far. And I mean. So when you're getting back attacked, you will start or you flip your row. If you're in the front row, you're then in the back row. If you're in the back row, you're then in the front row. They attack you from the back, so it kinda makes sense. The thing is, if you're in the back row, you only deal 50% of your damage with physical attacks in this game. And those wild necks have about 100 HP. So I just barely deal enough damage with each individual swing sitting in the front row. So I would need two attacks per wild neck or switch the row to the front. Either way, it would take a fair bit longer. And I think it is to just run away and get another fight where I start properly. That reminds me, I probably should activate the uh, announcement for SSCC again. Because people may want to vote on what they would like to see next.
Thank you. But anyway, um, so the thing is, the bard will take a pretty lengthy amount of time. And in case you're wondering why the Berserker is missing, the Berserker is special. Um, I will do the Berserker, because we did reach a certain stretch goal in a marathon earlier. I'm just not entirely sure how and when I want to weave that in. Like, my original idea is, while we are playing with the bard, or more specifically, not playing with the bard, running bosses out of MP, I was thinking we could potentially just do that there. But... The entire setup on how I would want to practically do that just kind of gives me a bit of a headache right now. So... We'll see. I might just kind of spontaneously start the Solo Berserker challenge while we are running certain bosses out of MP. The main problem is because even though I bought a... What is it? It is a Pro Action Replay 2, or Mark 2, whatever you want to call it. But unfortunately, it does not appear to work. Like, it doesn't appear to work at all, which is odd, I guess. Oh well. And it... I wanted to unlock the Berserker on console, because if I'm doing a solo Berserker, I might as well go all out and just do it straight up on console instead of anything else. So that is the current plan, but unfortunately I couldn't unlock the Berserker early. And I have no idea why it doesn't work with this thing. So my plan will be starting the solo Berserker on... Emulator? And get uh, to the wind shrine, at uh, the water shrine. And then we switch there to console afterwards. That is going to be my current plan. But that's kind of why it's such a headache to try and figure out the setup for how I want to even do this. Another thing that I was considering is... Normally I don't use emulator tools in order to play these challenges. But for the Bard, I might actually do a thing where... I will ram watch the enemy's MP, or the boss's MP. That way we have an idea of how long it will approximately take until the bosses run out of MP. Some bosses it will be like, I will literally just go and uh, tackle them at the end of the stream. And then just kind of start with their, them having no MP anymore at the beginning of the next stream. But others will be... well... I will need to figure out what to do during the time we are waiting. Just curious, but it would it be faster to use charms on these? Uh... I don't think it would be. I think it would be slower overall. Plus, unfortunately, we do not have any songs yet. So that's another problem. Charm Song will actually be really useful if I wanted to grind a bunch more after we defeat Biblos. Um, specifically, what I can do with Charm Song is we can go into the Ronka Ruins, and there's a section where there is Hydras and Hyudoras. The Hyudoras we can defeat with a Phoenix Down, just give them a phoenix down, they're just straight up dead. So that's actually really good. The Hydras we can easily defeat by using the Charm Song and charm the entire enemy battalion. And the Hydras will actually use Quake and Poison Breath against themselves. Which is a relatively efficient way of taking care of them, actually. So if I wanted to gain a bunch more levels, that would be where I want that. Which... I will definitely want to get more levels, I just don't know how many I want before moving on. And yes, what Mercer says test is accurate. Also, welcome to you. Hope you're doing well. You do learn them from certain people at certain stages. And the first song is when you actually first would get the Bard in the first place, as in the Bard class. Right now, 
In this game, I'm using a cheat code to unlock the bard class early, so I can... Well, do the entire thing as a bard. And the earliest you normally get the bard class is after you defeat Biblos, get the boat and head over to Crescent Island. That is also where you get the first time access to having hearts, which is the bard exclusive weapon. Which, by the way, are not terribly good. I will get to that once we well, get to that. And alternatively, you also get the first song there, which is, I think, the Mighty Marsh? I'm not sure how, what it is called in this version. Effectively, it's the regeneration, but for your entire team. And the regeneration, like just recovering HP ticks, is actually going to be kind of nice. But then have... Yeah, exactly. Because otherwise, a lot of classes, like let's say the Samurai, we would just be Freelancer until we defeat Archeo Avis, which... You would be missing out on potentially a lot of interesting bosses until we finally get our unlock that class. Does region apply while hidden? No. Unfortunately, it does not. But what I've been thinking is what we can potentially do if we are faster than a boss. What we can do is we can unhide right after the boss takes an action and then hide again right before the boss takes his next action. That way we could potentially get some regeneration ticks in uh, in between their attacks. I don't know whether that actually works. But it's a thought. Do I do all challenges with fairies? No. I At the beginning of each run I have a little... Not a straw poll, um, a raffle, and people can then define which character I play this challenge with, either fairies or butts, because those are the characters that are present for most of the bosses. So those are, generally speaking, the two choices that I give. Uh, the background color of the window, as well as what the name for butts should be. So Ferris actually has the highest stat total overall, and especially agility can make a bit of a difference. I'm not sure how much of a difference it makes for a bard though. What does a Ferris run do versus Antline? Yes, that's the one boss that Ferris misses out on compared to Butt. And you just use whatever to get past Antline. Because my general reasoning is that if you manage to defeat Xdef at the end of World 2, you probably don't have that much trouble with dealing Antline if you could use your character. So we just use level 2 and level 1 characters with jobs and setups etc to get past Antline. So what I generally do is, I have a Dancer and a Mystic Knight, where I also buy sleep. Speaking of which, let me go and buy sleep real quick. Because sleep allows us to use a Mystic Knight to put the Antline to sleep, and then the Dancer just dances and the Antline never wakes up. Oh, I already have it, okay. But yeah, that's just kind of my reasoning. If you manage to get past Antlion, uh, past Xdef at the end of World 2, you probably don't have that much trouble with Antlion. Since he has a quarter of the HP. He can be annoying, and you can have deaths to him, even with fully level characters after Xdef. So it's not like it's entirely trivial, but... With a little bit of trial, it's usually not that big of a deal. For example, Antlion was actually more difficult than Xdef for the White Mage. Although I guess for the White Mage, I also specifically leveled two solo White Mages rather than just one, so that's also a mild difference. 
Also, in case you're wondering about... Your link to the straw poll is broken. Oh, it is. Oh, that happened. Thank you. I'm gonna fix that real quick. How does that happen? Okay, let's see. Is that also broken for the SSCC? Uh, no, for the SSCC it's fine. Okay. Thank you for the heads up. 24. What did I say? 27 is the current goal here. By the way, in case you're wondering what about uh, the Twin Towers, an approach would be is you could say, oh, you can't do those with a solo character challenge. Another approach is that you just do the Minotaur side with your character, reset, and then you just do the Omniscient side with the solo characters. That way you technically defeat both of them with a solo character, even though on the second run, you will have to briefly defeat Minotaur with level 1 Samurai, which is pretty easy to do. As in, Samurai is the easiest way anyways. Ribbon, then, 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 then,
already gained a bunch of levels since we started. But this is just going to be the bird. Once we get our guardian deck here, this process will be a bit faster thanks to being able to defeat turtles instead of just the wolves. But we still need the money anyway, so it's not like we're wasting time here. The rabbi reached level 70. Holy moly. Rump. I can't remember the last time the rabbi leveled up. Soon we need more potions again. We went through like 160 potions already. But that's just how it is. A poor little bard is not particularly strong or defensively oriented.
Robert. Mate sound. Thank you. Oh boy. Thank you so much for 40 as extra rumps of support. In a row. That's a long time. Welcome back. And I'm glad you enjoy your stay. Only a couple of months until your birthday. Are we going to have a party? Maybe. I'm not good at parties. But I really appreciate you being around. Thank you, mate aunt. That's really nice of you. I hope you have a nice day so far. Job hunting stuff over for now. Can watch again. I see. Good luck with your job hunt. Hope it works out in your favor, whatever that means. And welcome back. You're not really missing anything, we are just holding down the A button in order to attack these guys repeatedly until we are level 27. Once we are 27, we are actually going to tackle the next area. For well, the next two areas in a sense. But this will still take a while. We are only 24, we still need 924 experience, we don't get a whole lot per encounter. <laughs> Dual boxing, warrior and the druid, so yeah, basically a paladin. <laughs> nice, I like that. I was actually rather strongly considering doing some dual boxing myself. But then I was just like, ah, nah, I'm good. Keep it simple. Interesting thing is... If you play two healer classes, you can almost uh, have full efficiency in raids, just dual boxing with two characters. Almost. And great to see you, Don Loser. Thank you for the good luck. It should reconnect with people you've worked before. Nice. Hope that works out well. You just hit 60 on your palette this weekend. Protection since level 1 because you like to live stupidly. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. I, my highest character right now is a level 43 priest, but then I also have a level 41 druid, and a level 30 warlock, and another level 13 warlock now, because, well, reasons. You just hit 60, nice, congratulations Rumbo. Yeah. The thing is, a lot of us also stopped playing because of the blizzard thing. But it's just like, yeah, no. And I'm really torn right now whether I would want to continue or not. But it's like, eh, I don't know. No idea. Usually a good sign indeed, Ice Burner. Good luck.
Still come solo pirates here. <laughs> Basically, I've infinite sustain. Oh, I don't have potions anymore. You do kind of inf have infinite sustain with dual boxing like that. My main, let's say, concern would be personally that it's like. I would feel like it's super inefficient of me to not use the cat form as well in order to do a bunch of damage on top of it. So I would always want to somehow integrate cat form as well on top of it. Which would probably be rather difficult to do. You are your pocket healer. Oh yeah, that was you. That's right. Oh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Fair. Anyway, as you may notice, we actually start dealing uh, more damage than before now. We have reached level 25, which means we have an attack multiplier of 6. So all our attack damage is multiplied with, well, 6. And the dagger has a 0 to... Basically, the dagger's attack damage is whatever the dagger's base line is, plus 0, 1, 2, or 3, depending on RNG. So 6 times whatever that attack damage is. Let's see yeah, real quick, just in case somebody's curious. So dagger attack power is 23 with the Mithril dagger here. 23 times 6 is the lowest number we can roll if the enemy has zero defense. And I think those wild knacks have zero defense. Either way, if they do not have zero defense, it is whatever the attack power is, minus defense and then multiplied with 6. <laughs> oh wow. They sell for that much? How? Are people are already twinking. <laughs> That's fair, mate son. That makes sense to me. Your interest in WoW Classic is dwindling down. Yeah, it makes sense. I don't blame anybody for stopping. 
A lot of people have stopped already at this point. You're making your own fun. The most fun I think I would potentially have would be trying to like make an entire party by myself. Have a heal by myself, have a tank by myself, and three DPS, whatever those might be. Probably mages. Actually, I like Morlocks better, but then again, not for classing necessarily. No, not a back attack. That <laughs> would be a funny story. It would be. I mean, if you have enough gold, you can do stuff like once the Anki Rai releases. You could just pay people to help you out get the quest done. Wherever the uh, rate content etc is necessary. Sometimes you dodge everything. Hunted on farm. Nice. Yeah, actually, I've watched Overfiend VIP's channel, and you are in the same guild as him, if I'm not mistaken, Duckfist. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, same here, Ghost Eye. Same here. The main reason why a lot of the guild is not playing right now. Including me, actually. Glorfiend is pretty swell. Oh yeah, absolutely. I got the pleasure, actually, the very first time I was at a shitty queue. Glorfiend uh, was actually just sitting behind me and Stinger for a pretty lengthy amounts of time, just watching us run Seeker of Mana. And he's a really chill and relaxed dude. Pretty awesome. And then it turns out he's pretty crazy good at certain games like Super Metroid 2. And he has the current record for Seeker of Mana that's through any percent run. <laughs> Plane. Yeah. How do you delete somebody else's chat message? Well, only usually you can do that when you're a mod. Alternatively, if you don't like somebody, you could use the ignore command. Thinking about Sword of Mana. Yeah, he did end up running a bunch of Sword of Mana, which is the game I really, really would like to play sometime again. You need to lead it from reality though, can we swing that? No, that's kinda difficult, sorry. I do not quite have these mid powers. But if it's offensive, make sure to report it. That those tend to help. Personal opinion. Final Fantasy XIV, you either need fr have friends or a group to play with, or need to be really into the lore. Hmm. My first thought when I read that couple of crypts was just like, isn't it that pretty much every game is more fun with friends? Mario Party isn't. I disagree. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> but no, as a general concept, it's like... When you read my various games reviews, when... Some people just say, the game is not that great, it's just kind of painful and mediocre, and somebody usually gives the comment of, you just need to play it with friends. But then again... It's not necessarily about the game you're playing, it's just you're playing with friends. And that's kind of where the good things come from instead. Goldeneye isn't? I haven't really played Goldeneye. I'm Fantasy 14, everything is locked behind main story. Oh. Eh. Games with forced dungeons or forced story progression are definitely better with friends. Ah, oh, yeah, I can see that. This game really gets good after the first 60 hours. It's certainly a review, and it's what I keep hearing about Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah, to be fair, it's an MMO. So I feel like the rules there work a little bit different. 
And it's actually somewhat reasonable-ish to say after 60 hours it gets better. For any other game, no really. Any game where the only goal in party play is to try and mess up the other person isn't always fun, my friends. That's fair, Wells. And after the first 60 hours, you're just about to leave the tutorial of the story. Uh. Mm. At least it has a story. Well, actually, that's kind of where... I'm personally like, I don't need a story if the rest of the game is good. In fact, I'm actually not interested in a lot of games because I don't care about the story, I just want to play the game. A good story can make a game a lot better. But then again, there's me who is just like, I just would like to play the game and have good gameplay. And if the story on the side that is not too intrusive is good as well, then that's a plus. But spe specifically like Pokemon Sun and Moon is probably a good example, where I would like to have a lot less story and just more to play instead. For you, it's always a mood thing. Sometimes you enjoy a game of a story, sometimes you just want to play. Right, that makes sense too. And yeah, that's exactly where I stand about Final Fantasy XIV, couple of Eclipse. I love the raids and dancing, and just kind of execution of these fights. But getting there seems to be too much of a chore to me personally. So I'm not terribly interested mainly because of that. Almost 26 and just one more level. The story locking content is only a real problem if you create more cactus. Isn't it more fun to play a big bulky healer though, and then a, a tiny small tank? Or a really scraggly tank or something like that? At least that's my impression of it. Created the jump potions? What is a jump potion?
No potion unless you skip a huge part of the main story. Hmm. Bam, 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 Twenty six. Basically, it jumps you to the beginning of certain expansions or certain level, depending on which one you buy. Right. But then again... So, here's my dilemma for these kinds of things. Aside from the money. Um, if I do that, aren't I going to miss out on learning how to play certain aspects of the game, or how my character works properly? Or the stuff, or... things? But then again, I know that I learn usually faster than, let's say, the average person for these kinds of games, because I have a lot of gaming experience nowadays. That's that too. And the jump potion that gets you to max level or the end of the current expansion, so you're still forced to play the game. Hmm. Right, but then there's the other ca uh, side of... Well, I jumped that far into the game, so I have 200 things that I need to learn about the game before I can start properly playing again. <laughs> There's also an acceptable tutorial system that is not level required. Alright. Let's <laughs> go. 
Thunder just a standalone the same account that has the same version on it. Right. <laughs> and a frog, paper airplanes, yeah, you make some weird tacos there, right there, too, so... That sounds really confusing, Brofness. Management is terrible. It sounds like it. So, if somebody wanted to start, how would they have to approach it? I'm not going to start it, by the way, just in case you're curious. I'm not currently enough interested. Only ever buy Steam expansions after that? Oh, I think I get what you mean with that. Still really weird. Seven potions left. Or only standalone. Huh. Not mix up standalone with Steam stuff. Okay. more likely to find discounts during your Steam sale events and such. But they do have sales for standalones too. Oh. <laughs> I 
<laughs> what? You still need to pay a subscription fee for that Kablooey Crips. No, no, uh, let's put it this way. I know this channel is speaking a subscription fee, but the question was more in the vein of uh, for the amount you paid, do you get the subscription fee for the first month or so included? Oh, okay. That's exactly what you just said. Fair enough. Thank you. How close are we to 27 at this point? 3146 experience. Calculator. 3146 experience. Yeah. Divided by however much experience we get per combat here, which I actually have no idea how much it is. Let's see, how much was it? 350 experience is actually a lot more than I anticipated it to be. So this is eight more fights until we level up And we're already more than halfway there to both the angel and uh, I was confused as to what I was doing. I was just buying more potions. How can I be confused about what I'm currently doing? Well, because my brain told my fingers to hit the A button a bunch after I got out of the menu. But my brain also right afterwards forgot why I was doing that. Weird. Alrighty. Either way, we need eight more fights here in order to level up to level 27. Have you ever played newer Final Fantasy games, like Final Fantasy VII or newer? I have tried playing Final Fantasy VII, but I could never get into it. I gave it like three different attempts. I have played the demo of Final Fantasy VIII, which at the time I would have loved to play it, but nowadays, eh, not so much anymore. I have played through the entirety of Final Fantasy IX on stream, it's highlighted. So it actually might be my favorite one of the bunch at this point, outside of the combat system. And I have played Final Fantasy X until... the Seymour fight, which... I don't know, might be like halfway, might probably not quite. But at the time, I did not have my own PlayStation 2. So I just kind of borrowed it for a weekend from a friend, and that's how far I got in one weekend. Because afterwards he wanted it back. Understandable. Pan Fancy's Junction System. Honestly, the main thing that prevents me from even giving Fan Fancy 8 much of a shot is because enemies scale with you. 
I just really don't like that concept at all. You don't think you finished even one Final Fantasy game? Final Fantasy V was the first Final Fantasy game I have ever finished. And that wasn't until like four or five years ago when I discovered Forge of Fiesta thanks to this uh, well, community here on Twitch, where it's just like, huh. Suddenly, Happy Squid is playing Final Fantasy V, or Magus is playing Final Fantasy V, Wexel is playing Final Fantasy V. What is going on? What is this game even about? And that's when I learned about Forge of Fiesta. So my very first playthrough of this game here was through a Forge of Fiesta. And that was pretty much the perfect playthrough for me, because there's so many jobs and options and possibilities. I would have been pretty much... Uh choices overload like too many choices and choice paralysis is a real thing there you just don't feel like playing anymore because there's so too many avenues and branches to explore so having or being limited to exactly four of the jobs was actually really good for me You just grind it to level 100 and struggle in the final areas a lot. Yeah. Like for me it's a case of I like to learn how much HP an enemy has exactly. That way I can plan on taking them out more and more efficiently. But if I just gain a level and suddenly they have more HP and also deal more damage, everything just kind of goes out the window. That's like rubber banding in Mario Kart. Yeah. Spills beating up some dogs, yep. We're actually almost done with this initial grind here. We're almost 27, where I'm gonna go ahead and take out Liquid Flame. Or try to anyways. That might just be a case of, well, too bad. Good unlucky. Too bad there's no realistic hope of a 3DS player. You mean like... an emulator type thing? Or like an official emulator type thing is what I'm getting at. Can you ask, has anything new been discovered in Secret in the last six months? No. I don't think so. There's a soft lock I've never seen before that happened to one of the runners recently on Hexas. And one of the runners somehow just kind of soft locked after Hexus. That I have never seen before. But beyond that, uh. Nothing new in particular. I guess I have messed around with. trying to skip certain parts of the Gold City Tower, but beyond that, not really. Like Super Game Boy player or TBA player? Oh, I see. Yeah, that would be nice actually. Playing with limits lets you discover things you'd never find casually. Yes. I agree. Especially in this kind of game. Where the obvious answer to defeating Biblos is you just use fire. But did you know that Biblos is susceptible to poison? 
And you can just wait out 16 ticks until he's defeated without ever suffering any counterattacks. To be fair, any class that has access to poison could also just use fire. But I did not know he was weak to fire at the time, so yeah. You could see a ste stereoscopic format for his party emulation service someday. Would be nice. Lots of good games that are so very inaccessible to streaming. Yeah, I would love to play, like, Majora's Mask 3D, but I really don't like playing on a handheld. Like, that's what I realized when playing Pokemon Sun and Moon. I just really don't like playing on a handheld. I have attempted to play... Uh, at this point, I have a Switch, and I've attempted to play... Uh, the, 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 the Seeker of Mana collection in handheld mode, and it's just not for me. Still have this touchscreen as an issue? You do. I think touchscreen is probably the biggest problem from before. Uh, about putting DS on a bigger screen. Alrighty, we are level 27. We're gonna buy potions and then we go over and knock out the quit flame. So we have leveled up four more levels from 23 to 27. In just about, what was it, one and a half hours? Something like that. Actually, I think it's just about two hours soon. I'd always pretty much buy add-ons to for handles to make them easier to hold on to. I see. For me it's not necessarily that it's difficult to hold on to. I just really don't like the tiny screens. And I have a 3DS XL, so still too small for my taste. I did not mind as a kid. Because I could actually play while the TV was occupied by somebody else. But that was great. Hard to put two switches back to back for one player to control, you mean? Oh. <laughs> it's not quite a hat in mind, but fair. Saturn analog pad. You still prefer handheld, though that might be because you're commuting on the two hours per trip each workday. I see. When I was still commuting, I think about 40 minutes one way, twice a day, I was actually just reading books. And I kind of miss reading books because uh, there's not really any other time I would read the books. Hmm. Skerga! Skerja? Hello! Welcome! Thank you! Thank you so much for four rumps of support with Twitch Prime! Welcome back to you. Well, I'm glad you enjoy your stay. Welcome back. I hope you're doing well. Books! I think Yagabot likes books too. Start book 7, Wheel of Time. I heard they are pretty decent. Although the video game is a bit weird. <laughs> Kinda fun to watch with covered muffins though.
I don't remember the last time you read one. For me, it's like five... Uh, actually, no, it's more like two years ago. When I got the English version of Otherland and started reading that one. Okay, do I need to consider anything? I don't think. Quite happy with it. Nice, Ancient Seraph. Alrighty, so here we have this next boss here. This is Liquid Flame. Liquid Flame has three different forms. It always starts in the human form. And whenever you attack Liquid Flame, it will counterattack and then switch forms to one of the other two at random. So this one here will always counterattack with Flame. Hits your entire party and each member in the party for 25% of their maximum health and damage. Meaning if you get hit by this four times, you're dead. Well, minus rounding errors. You might survive four attacks. So this is the second form, or another form anyways, Liquid Flame's Tornado form. All the Tornado form does is it heals itself with Fire 2. It only has enough MP to cast Fire 2 five times and then it's out. But the HP pools are shared among all three forms, however, the MP pools are separate. So, Liquid Flame has a total of 3000 HP. And this thing here will very soon run out of MP, so it will no longer be able to heal itself. So, during this form I have plenty of time to just heal up if I wait, basically. Fire 2. Alrighty, now we start hitting it. So Magnet will pull you from the back row into the front row. And this is the hunt form. Uh, its normal attacks are either regular attacks, or it will use an attack that stuns you on top of it. And stun is one of the worst things that can happen to you in a solo character challenge run. Uh, the hand form uh, counterattacks with fire 2 on your character, which is really strong. But the hand form only has enough MP to cast fire 2 three times. And because during the tornado form liquid flame effectively doesn't do anything, I have plenty of time to just heal up through regular potions, even though they don't heal much, it's enough, and I have infinite time anyways. You do have audiobooks and you put together like, jigsaw puzzles while you listen. That sounds really awesome actually. I like that a lot. I think that's my maximum HP? I don't remember what my maximum HP is. Here okay, it is. So here I wait again until it moves, because I'm actually faster in speed. Um, I get to attack again before Liquid Flame moves a second time. Or at least I thought it would. But apparently that's not how... But I guess each individual form also has its uh, individual speed as well. So, and now here we have a little problem. Because I'm going to take another 163 damage as soon as I attack. Because it will always counterattack with flame. Flame does not cost MP. Which means. That the humanoid form can use flame as a regular attack or just a physical attack, whatever it feels like doing at the time. And it can do so indefinitely. So, what I hope for is effectively getting the hand form again and again and again where it's going to be out of MP very soon at this point. And then whenever I need to heal, just kind of get a tornado form for casual healing up with potions, 50 HP at a time. So effectively I had a 50% chance to go to the hand form again rather than the tornado form, but I just figured I'd take that risk rather than healing. And potentially I would have had enough time to use an elixir, in case it was a hand form anyways. This way I even save an elixir. So, and now we just heal up until we have 673 HP again. It's not terribly fast, but with this kind of strategy you can relatively easily defeat Liquid Flame, assuming you survive the counterattack from Fire 2. And that's the biggest difficulty for some cactus which have 
very low HP growth, as in their vitality stat being pretty low, like the Bard, for example. I believe only the Dancer is worse in having less maximum HP. So, yeah. Which is also why we want to level up so ridiculously high to level 34 for Biblos, because maximum HP is going to be really important. Alright. And form again. I don't remember whether it has one more attack or not. Fingertips will stun us, so we can't do anything in the meantime. This is pretty much all the hand form does, however. I'm attacking. Alrighty, that was probably the last fire to attack. And now, whenever the hand form pops up, we have a pretty easy way of dealing damage without having to worry about things. We dealt so far 1239 damage, so we still have more than half the way to go, but at least we won't have to heal up as much anymore since the hand is out of MP now. So the hand form really doesn't do anything aside from just regular physical attacks and a physical attack with a stun effect. That's it, that's all the hand form ever does by itself. At this point the humanoid form is the most dangerous one, because it has, well, the flame attack that just deals the most damage to, compared to anything else. Alrighty, get to attack again as soon as it moves. And this is actually really bad luck if the humanoid form decides to use flame by its own volition rather than nothing else because this is half of our HP gone just because we switched over to the human form and they decided to be mean. Not much we can do about that. Well, I said that we will have to heal up less, but that's only really true if we get the hand form sometimes. Um. <laughs> we bought 99 potions, by the way. We are already down to... 62. I guess that's technically the second potion wasted already. Okay, let's go. And an 82. And firm, hooray. We can also dodge these physical attacks. The elf cape does give us a 1 in 3 chance to block them. And flame again. What a shame. I think 161 is the lowest damage roll we can get. That's good to know. So worth noting, by the way, that the three forms do have uh, individual evasion, which means they can dodge our attacks. The tornado form has 30% baseline evasion, however, because we are using a dagger weapon, the evasion of the enemy is cut in half, so 15% of the time, if we attack the tornado, we are actually just going to miss. Also vice versa, um, I believe the humanoid form has a 20% baseline dodge chance, so 10% of the time we're gonna miss, and I think the finger form is, or hand form, is 10%. I'm not sure about that one. 
Not entirely, anyways. Semitas. The Semitas place that made amazing Semitas when he entered the food box. Amazing. Has gone very much downhill. Oh, sorry to hear that. I know that feeling, because one of my favorite kebab places when I was still in Bern, they exchanged the formula for one of their sauces. And unfortunately, that was not exactly to my benefit. Oh yeah. Two more attacks and the boss is actually going to be defeated at this point. So we've gotten pretty lucky at the last few attacks here. Uh, we kept getting the hand form. So no matter what the flame does here, we will just attack. Or, oh yeah. Because we will defeat them in next attack. There we go. Depending on which uh, form you defeat, you actually get different treasures or well, drops. Humanite form is just a flame scroll for a ninja, which is good for a ninja, but we don't play a ninja, so we can't use it. And it's actually also the least valuable in terms of sale value. Tornado form gives you a fireball, which is the best for money, and the flame rod is from the hand form, I think. I might have that backwards. No, I think that's also about right. Alrighty, we have a bunch of health potions left over, which are probably going to be very much necessary. And I'm actually going to be curious how... or whether I can actually get any elixirs out of this section here. So upcoming we have a castle escape sequence where we will have 10 minutes in order to run out of the area and well if the 10 minutes run uh, are up which by the way the timer does run during menus as well as in combat once the 10 minutes are up we will game over so that's kind of a problem if we well don't hurry, to say the least. So what we will want to do... ...is obviously get out at the appropriate time. However, there is one item we absolutely need to grab before running outside in this section here, and that is the Guardian Dagger. The Guardian Dagger has a special function where one of four times it's just going to block a physical attack, which stacks multiplicatively with the health cape, so not as good as it could be as if it was additively, but still pretty decent. On top of that, the Guardian Dagger has literally 15 or 50% 50 more attack power than the Mithril Dagger, which is the other best weapon we could use at this point, which we are, well, using right now. So it's way stronger has a defensive purpose, and it's going to be our best weapon for actually a really long time. And there's not really going to be anything else that we can use. So that Guardian Dagger will be incredibly valuable. Um, other classes, aside from the Bard, actually also want to go and grab the Elf Cape which allows you to dodge one in three attacks. But the, as a bard, we actually are, well, we're able to already grab it earlier in a previous section, which contains an incredibly powerful enemy that is really difficult to run away from, but thanks to the hide ability, running away is easy. You heard Carnitas. You're done. You're making me hungry now. 
Karnak explodes in 10 minutes. It's less than ideal. So first of all, we save because we could die, possibly. So there's various chests in here that we want to open. This one here contains 2,000 gil. Uh, the chests with money in them are not guarded by enemies. However, everything else that contains an item, one way or another, is guarded by enemies. Certain items we don't need, like another ninja throwing scroll or a white mage spell and... What else? The elf cape we also don't have any use for anymore. So I'm going straight for the chest that I absolutely want and also grab the money chests along the way. And then I hope I have enough time to grab a few elixirs out of the other chests. Because those elixirs, well, we will not have to grind for them if we get them here. Plus we actually get decent experience from the enemies. So here we go. Monster in a box. What I'm gonna do is actually going to hide and run away as long as I do not get what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is the encounter where we only have one Gigas enemy, and that's it. Well, a back attack is just horrible. How can you get back attacked when you keep doing the same thing there? Hmm. The charm actually could have been really bad in that hit. Because we get confused, we don't get a turn until we get hit by a first legal attack, then we have to charge up our ATB the entire time again. <laughs> Are you serious? 1 in 16 chance. So those Gigas enemies are pretty strong. They have 750 HP. And they counterattack with Aero, which deals about... I would say 70-80 damage. And they also have a pretty beefy physical attack and sometimes Aero too, as you may have seen. So they are not to be taken lightly. And having a sorcerer who can confuse you on top of it is just trouble that we really don't want to have. Really? That's the third... back attack. I opened the chest backwards. Yeah, but the back attack should then be for me, right? Not the other way around. Yeah, running away from these encounters from the chest actually normally is really difficult, but the hide ability allows us to automatically run away, so that's nice. Come on. There we go. That's what we're looking for. So I need three, four, five... Five attacks in order to defeat this guy. I will probably use an elixir in order to get through here if I drop too low. Because this guy, as you can see, definitely hits like a truck. We can also get lucky that he doesn't counterattack. And we can dodge. <laughs> no, no. You turn around, put the arms behind you and lift at the lid. I do not think I would do such a thing. Alright, we defeated him. So here is the promised Guardian Dagger. So much stronger, and it will be an immediate relief and upgrade. We only have 26 potions left. So there is a few other chests that... Some of them contain more Gigas enemies, that also have elixirs in them. Others are random whether it's Gigas enemies, or sorcerer enemies. And I want to actually get sorcerers, because while they can confuse, It's actually kind of easy to take them out, thanks to having a decent attack power weapon now. As long as he doesn't confuse me the first turn. we are gonna be fine. So I still attack the Karnak enemies first. You don't want the sorcerer to die first. Because, well... Unfortunately, the sorcerer's in the back row, so he only takes half damage. Once I defeat the wolves, it will take full damage. Okay. But I just realized this is still a bad idea to try and take these on. Because I need two hits in order to defeat the sorcerers. Either way, we get an elixir. I think farming elixirs outside is easier, so I'm just gonna go. Okay, sometimes you get into random encounters, but thanks to having the hide ability we can run away. This is basically the sergeant that hunts you down inside, but the encounter rate is so low that often you will not see him until here. This is where we actually are forced to fight the sergeant. Once you defeat all three of the Karnak enemies, 
uh, the Sachin will turn into Iron Claw. And Iron Claw has a decent amount of defense. As well as an ability that is called Death Claw. Death Claw paralyzes you and puts you to critical HP. Quite simply a death sentence in most circumstances when you get hit by that in a solo character challenge run. So what we do is we do not defeat the last Karnak. We just defeat two of them so they deal a little bit less damage. So the guard in dagger block attack in action and just defeat the sergeant first. Unfortunately the sergeant, sergeant here as you can see only takes half damage. So less than ideal. But on the bright side, in this encounter, as opposed to the random encounters inside the castle, these Karnak enemies do not attack on their own volition. They only attack when the sergeant tells them to. Inside the castle, in the random encounters, the Karnak enemies attack on their own volition, as well as the sergeant telling them to attack on top of it. So you actually get significantly more attacks inside. But you're supposed to take the wolves out. But the only reason why you would ever do, uh, well, want to have Iron Claw in a solo character challenge run is if you want to have Death Claw as an ability for blue mages. Which we did get during our blue mage run. Took a few tries, but we got it eventually. And of course the Karnak disappear on the escape once they are the last remaining enemy. I guess I haven't really displayed this yet. But while it's a shame to leave so many elixirs behind, I think it's... Ah no, I can get one more. Uh, one of these chests is a guaranteed... Gallius enemy, and now that I deal more damage, it's gonna be a lot more reasonable. This one here is guaranteed one Gallius enemy. And I just need three attacks now in order to defeat them. Sorcerers at this point are more dangerous because I would deal, well, about 200 damage to myself if I'm confused. Which is really not good. And that was another elixir. Also we get uh, 350 experience, so that's nice. They also do drop an item that is called the Giant's Elixir, which doubles your HP. But it can only be used by a chemist with the drink ability, which we do not have. Oh, by the way, even though we defeated the sergeant outside already, it's still a random encounter in here. Alrighty, and that was that. We have our guardian dagger, and now grinding outside, we would be grinding in the plains rather in the forest, which the enemies give significantly more experience. even though they give less money. But since the main thing we are looking for is experience anyways, that is going to be how we will work with that. Alrighty, and with this we have reached level 27, just 7 more levels, which are going to be about equally as slow to get as the previous ones, except that it's twice as many. Just 7 more levels until we will be able to tackle Biblos at a reasonable pace, I would think. And really, the main issue is maximum HP. Damage is okay, not great against Biblos, but it's acceptable. But because he can slow us and then just deal so much damage that if I I could die in between using elixirs being slowed. Like if I just spam elixirs I could still sometimes die. That is possible. So we want to have about a thousand maximum HP which conveniently will reach about level 35. Level 34 is actually our next threshold for dealing decent damage or even more damage than we deal already. So... That will be that. But that is going to be it for now, I would think. 
So finally back in Final Fantasy V with the Solar Bar Challenge. This is going to be a grind, but... I'm actually kind of looking forward to this one, mainly because I figured out a strategy for x -Def that I think is going to work pretty well. It's still going to be luck-based, because the first turn we will always die two or three times. And then the pr afterwards we are still reliant on a bit more luck. But hey, that's gonna be that. So everybody, thank you so much for watching, for listening and for lurking. I hope you enjoyed your stay, I hope you enjoyed your time, and well... Hopefully until next time. Take care everybody and thank you very much.